here at Miami's first vegan festival, Seed Miami. So today we're going to speak about why plant-based food is amazingly important for us. Now, up until now, the beginning of the 21st century, we've been thinking about the nutrients in food, like proteins and vitamins and minerals and trace minerals and essential fatty acid. Well, if you know about nutrition, you'll understand that all of those literally are at the highest amount in green plant-based food. That every drop of these nutrients come from protons from the sun that literally are captured on a green leafy plant in the process that we call photosynthesis. You have to know that we have so far estranged ourselves from the original diet this is why we're as sick as we are today. We're spending lots of our time over the last 60 years trying to educate people worldwide as well as trying to now teach the medical community that diet in and of itself that contains animal-based food and chemicals is a cause of more than 85% of all disease. So the life that you want in food is what we're going to now discuss. The 21st century is really about going beyond the basic nutrients and recognizing and realizing that the most important nutrition we're looking for is the energy within the food. Over the decades, this has been called different things by physicists, by biophysicists, by quantum biologists, etc. But what we understand clearly is that the human body is made of electromagnetic frequency. That every one of the cells have not only electrons in it, but magnetites. And that this is really what needs to be nourished more than anything else. If you look at the only food that can nourish that, it's food that is plant-based and food that is raw. It's not good enough to be just plant-based. Once you cook a food and break apart the molecule, atom, and proton structure, the energy of the food is gone and will not feed the human cell. We now know, since the 1980s, that healthy human cells work at 75 hertz. And if you have all of your 100 trillion cells working at 75 hertz, it would literally be impossible to contract cancer and other diseases. So we have been watching this in our clinical research on humans since the 1950s. I, with my colleague, began three years ago writing my new book that will be out early next year called Quantum Human Biology. Dr. Valerie Hunt was a pioneer in this field, was a professor, a biophysicist at the University of California, Los Angeles, until her death recently in her late 90s. And what she began in the 1980s is photographic exposés to validate the electromagnetic difference that occur when people were eating living food, living plant-based food. And in 1983, she did an extraordinary experiment where she literally took a young athlete from UCLA, sat him down on the American diet, and fed him a hamburger, a soda, and french fries. As the chromium photography portrayed, as his Adam's apple went up and down and he swallowed, slowly but surely, the energy field around his body went to absolutely nothing. She then sat him down, Ten minutes later, after giving him a quart and a half of water, put him on raw plant-based foods, and we saw the exact reversal happen. We also know that when we're measuring the biofrequency of cells, there's more than just food 
that can be working with. We at the Hippocrates Institute for 35 years since I became director in 1980 have been utilizing electromagnetic therapy, cold laser therapy, now cyber scan therapy, and measuring with biofrequency therapy out of Russia. And as technology is growing and booming, about every three years, the newest technology leads us to go to that because we can now speed up recoveries and health for people by hooking them up to these machines. We'll speak about each and every one. 30 years ago, I used to use the type of lasers that were very old school, that we really hoped that they had helped dramatically in increasing the cell strength, specifically the immune system strength, of people who had cancer. But they were utterly failing. They did minimal, if anything. We then waited until about seven years ago and started to work with a doctor in California who was using the latest technology successfully. We went out and trained with him, and now we've employed that in our program for our guest. And when you can use laser that virtually captures the protons from the sun and impose that on people's bodies, you get very rapid recoveries from a wide array of diseases. About six months ago, we brought in from Germany CyberScan. CyberScan is remarkable. On a daily basis, we're in awe of this technology. When people arrive, which they do 52 weeks a year, on a Sunday, they put their hand on the CyberScan. Within 30 seconds, we determine 100,000 parameters. Not only the disorders that they have, but disorders that they will have. And we literally then have a card on the side of the unit that picks up those disorders, fills in the lack of frequency that we then give that to the person that they sleep in bed with for an entire year. So besides using the inherent natural raw plant-based foods, we're now advancing this and speeding it up when people are seriously ill or with athletes. At times, we're given the opportunity to train Olympic athletes, and what we've learned about them is that they flourish on green food. As we slowly but surely remove the fruits from their diets, their times increase, their stamina increases, and their cell structure becomes much better. We also know that the frequencies, unfortunately, in foods today, like fruit, have been thrown off because there's been hybridization going on now for millennia. And so what used to be a very natural food is no longer such a natural food. I've just come back from a month tour of North America, starting on the west coast, California, up to Canada, east coast of Canada, all over the northeast, and I'm making a two-hour presentation on the latest research on sugars from fruit. Now we have at our sides, after 35 years ago, we beginning to determine this, Stanford University, University of California, German Institute of Cancer, that they realize that fruit sugar, when it goes into the human body, literally turns into fats. We know from the work that we've done for 60 years, as well as the work that has been done by Warburg, who won a Nobel Prize in the 30s, that you do not want high fat contents in the human body because it reduces oxygen. So for over 30 years at Hippocrates, fruit has not been part of the diet for anyone fighting cancers, viruses, bacterias, molds, yeast, fungus, low blood sugar or high blood sugar. Yes, it's a raw food, but it's a manipulated raw food. We now know from the work of my colleague, Dr. Thomas Seifeld from Boston College, who wrote the most important book ever written on cancer called Cancer is a Metabolic Disease, quote, not a genetic disease. We have not been treating genetics at Hippocrates for six decades. We've been changing lifestyles. That's metabolism. His work now teaches us that cancer cells have 70 more receptor sites on for fruit than they do glucose. 
white sugar. So if you want to have more cancer, you literally eat fruit and drink the juices of fruit. We also recognize that besides the frequencies that you find in food, that we can throw those frequencies off by giving substances in high amounts like sugars and fats, even the kinds of fats you get from plants. So if we can minimize the amount of plant-based organic oils that we eat and assure ourselves that we're getting adequate amounts of the oleic acids, or you call them omega-3 oils, from eating foods like sprouts. So if you look at the highest frequency food that is disease resisting, health restoring, and disease preventing, it is things like germinated seeds, nuts, grains, and beans, and also weeds. And here in Florida, we're lucky because we have weeds 12 months a year. And they have another word connected to them everyone likes. It starts with an F, and I don't mean that. Free. So you can get these things for free. And there are edible weed books for all over the world. Here in South Florida, you can go to your library or get on the internet and look at the edible weeds that are growing in your neighborhood that are literally some of the most spectacular foods to prevent premature aging, disease, and the reversal of disease. These are the highest frequency foods, again, because of phyto coming in from the sun in the proton forms and being captured on the green leafy plant. Another area of food that is extraordinary are algaes that grow in fresh water and algaes that grow in salt water. If you look at the core of the Hippocrates diet, it's the very first life form on the planet, and that is blue-green algae, and blue-green algae that started literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millions of years ago created oxygen on the planet Earth. This is the origin of life on a biological level. This is why this morning at my house, and as I travel to Europe on Tuesday where I'll be lecturing, we get up every morning, we take five types of supplemental algaes. We also know that the sea, the second life forms, when the sea, the salt water came, the plants at the bottom of the ocean, literally like kelp, like dulse, etc., have a whole level of energy fields that come with this that are extraordinary for human health. Now, a lot of you today, because you follow the news, and that's why the news and the pharmaceuticals so well marry one another to scare you. Now all you talk about is Ebola. You wait a month or two, they're going to have a vaccine, they're going to convince you to get out of Walgreens, and you'll take it. The fact of the matter is that what you have to know is eating a diet that is going to strengthen the frequency of their cells and give them the prerequisite 75 hertz, you will not be contracting diseases that will kill you. You also are taking in the form of fresh, raw, green, leafy foods, shocking high amounts of oxygen. And guess what? Bacterias, viruses, and cancers do not live well in the presence of oxygen. This is what we've proven. This is not a theory for us. We're not people who made our popularity on the internet or with health books. We've worked for 60 years with the sensible and sickest people in the world and done clinical research on humans. And from that, what we speak about is almost factual information at this point. These can be written as we do within the archives of science. We also know that people today also reduce the electromagnetic energy field of each cell in their body through negative thought. And we've seen this time and time and time again. How many of you have noticed when you were shocked or unhappy, you literally feel the energy being drained out of you? Well, this will happen far less if you have food in your life that is so high in energy frequency that it actually prevents the stress from draining you. So this is a resilient food. This is why it's the most effective anti-aging food. People who live this way consistently and remove stress from their life consistently live longer, remain healthier, and youthful. 
that there's no exceptions to these rules. What is really nice for us to see is many people arrive at Hippocrates dying of stage four disease. After they recover, then they become youthful. It's not only that they've saved their life, is they've now renewed their life and they're virtually and literally going to live much longer than if they didn't contract the disease to begin with. Every other week I have somebody calling me or shaking my hand and saying, I thank God I got cancer. I thank God I got multiple sclerosis. I thank God I almost died of heart attacks because it forced me to change my diet. It forced me to change my attitude. And don't you be a person that waits to get that sick that in a hospital on a gurney, you're not sure you're gonna make it. Make these kind of choices and preempt the disorder and preempt the premature aging. You've gotta know that there's an ever-growing group of people that come to us at Hippocrates now that are not sick. We call these the walking sensible. And the walking sensible is growing. And I'm really proud of the organizers of this in Miami. I was presently surprised when I arrived here today and there were more than 100 people here. So let's give you in Miami a hand for coming to a plant-based conference. And this is literally sleeping the globe. This week, Dr. Annemarie and I are going to be speaking at two major medical conferences in Europe because we are kicking off the first ever legitimate medical school in Lithuania. This school will be a medical school that young men and women that want to become medical doctors will now be trained in lifestyle medicine and plant-based nutrition. So within a matter of 12 years, we will point to young people to go there, in English they'll be teaching, and that's where we're gonna start the army of love, the army of good doctors. We now have, we estimate, 30,000 medical doctors worldwide that are plant-based nutrition advocates, and that number is growing by the, by the mass. Just two weeks ago I spoke in San Diego at a plant-based nutrition conference to 400 medical doctors. So it's happening. They're taking baby steps, but it's happening. We cannot sustain life as we are today. Not only physical life for the human being, but the life of the planet Earth. It is impossible, totally, absolutely, literally impossible to eat meat and dairy and to survive on the planet Earth. Everyone who is the top scientists now in the environment also will tell you that the number one cause of degradation of the earth is because most of us in the West, not in the world, in the West, choose to eat the carcasses of animals and drink milk from their breast. Shame on us. It's insanity at its worst. And just because we've been doing it for a long, long time and because your mommy and daddy told you to do it and your teacher told you to do it, and when I went to get a PhD in nutrition, they were still telling us to do it. It doesn't mean it's right. Most of what you've been told when it comes to science today is not only not right, but it's diversely wrong. It's the opposite of true. So it's up to you today to ask yourself, do I want to be alive? Do I want to be vital? Do I want to live a long life? Do I want to have a life without disease? Do I want to reverse disease? Do I want to enjoy myself or do I want to suffer? And yes, it's hard to change your diet. And yes, it's hard to change your lifestyle. But let me tell you, it's much harder to be lying in a bed suffering. Much harder for your family to have you die prematurely. Much harder economically on you and the people that surround you. If you don't take responsibility for who you are and what you're doing. This is no longer a trend. This is a vital, essential necessity for the survival of human beings and the earth that we live on. Because if we do not change, believe me, we will perish. And we're getting closer by the day. The World Wildlife Federation just put a report out within the last two weeks where they've clearly stated since 1970, now let's count on your fingers, 1970, was 44 years ago. We have literally wiped out 50% of the wildlife on Earth in 44 years and 70% of the wildlife in the ocean. The beach I've been walking on for 30 years 
Since we moved Hippocrates from Boston, where it was for 30 years, I can no longer walk on. Because three years ago, what we had is a world-shaking event that your government doesn't want you to know, that half of the ice on Greenland melted. It was that autumn, after that summer, that I no longer had a beach I'd been walking on for 30 years. Here in Miami, I don't have to teach the choir, but your streets are flooding after two months without rain. And you may have heard President Obama tell you in a speech in front of the United Nations one month ago what I've just said. He used Miami as an example of greenhouse gases. How many of you live on Miami Beach and know what I'm talking about? It's time to change. And it's not good enough to say somebody's going to do this for you. The only one that can make things happen is you. It's always been one woman, one man, one courageous person that wants to live at a human level that becomes human. And if you become human, other people are going to watch you and say, I want what she has. I want what he has. <clears throat> time and time again, we've seen this throughout history. And it always works. We see what happens. Just this week, I was talking to a young lady, a nurse, 35, who came to us crippled with braces on her legs with multiple sclerosis. Nine days after she came, the braces were off. <clears throat> she works at one of the better hospitals in the New York City area. <clears throat> and they're stunned because she no longer has multiple sclerosis. Now, these... <clears throat> These are things all of us are capable of. But the problem is that you've got to know that you have the power inside of you to do this. That nobody can do this for you. <clears throat> the first thing we tell people when they walk in the door of Hippocrates, in 60 years, with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people who have come through the doors of Hippocrates, we've never healed one person. We love, we support, we guide, we hold the hand to people, but people heal themselves. You have been conned. You've been conned by the food industry, by the pharmaceutical industries, by every major corporation in the world. They've conned you and told you that you need them. You know who you need? You need you. And with a handful of coins in your hand, if you live the right way, you can survive. You know how little it costs to buy seeds? Nobody wants seeds. They want to sit at a restaurant and eat fancy food. Even the vegans want to eat at a fancy restaurant eating organic food. But the reality, quite simple, is you need to be doing things on a daily basis that really work. Not the thing you like the taste of the best, or not the thing that is the latest, hottest thing on the internet that's the best, or what you've read in the latest book from the last flash-in-the-pan person. You need to do things that literally have been established as your heritage when it comes to biology and life. And unless you're willing to do this, don't whine. Don't be surprised. Don't wonder what happened when you become sick and age prematurely. Because the fact is, it's all quite simple. We just have to get simple to know how to do it.